Hello everyone and welcome to Plugged In with the Unchargeables. My name is Winslow and our topic today is caregivers, both sides of the stethoscope. Let me explain the community a little bit first. The Unchargeables is a community of chronically ill people. We're here to support one another, to help each other, and to just make life a little easier if we can. So today I have two panelists with me, Cindy and Nelson. Cindy is um, a Spoonie just like us and Nelson is a licensed caregiver. So I'm gonna hand it to Cindy and let her tell her story. Hi, my name is Cindy and I have um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Graves disease and Chirogen's disease. Um, I was diagnosed with the Graves disease first and that was back in 2012. Um, RA came second and uh, just recently the children. So um, I am a spoonie and I do run out of spoons like everybody else. And um, I think it's just very important that we have all these conversations and get everything out there. So I'm hoping that my story can help also. So I will pass it over to Nelson. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nelson. I am a licensed CNA. I've been a CNA for about probably like six plus years now. Um, I am also currently in school to be a educational therapist. So I have a lot of experience dealing with um, more, more than elderly and dementia patients. I um, also have experience dealing with uh, someone who's chronically ill as well. Well, thank you guys. Um, like I said, we're going to talk about both sides of the stethoscope. So um, my first question is for Cindy. Um, I know, Cindy, since you have multiple um, diagnoses that you probably have a lot of different issues that you deal with. So what are some ways that caregivers can help somebody like you? Um, I think it's important mostly to have conversations. So whoever your primary caretaker is, whether it be your spouse or, you know, a best friend or even if any family member, I think that when you're first diagnosed, a conversation is very, very important to discuss how you're feeling, um, what you feel like you need personally from them, and really just to listen. You're not looking for people to fix you or to, um, you know, to, to do anything specific other than be there for you. Um, so when it starts with a conversation and then obviously it's the, it's the needs. So you, you try and communicate exactly what it is that you need from that person. It's a lot of pressure on a caregiver as well as a patient. And um, so I, I try and limit as, and do what I can do myself without putting a lot of pressure on my husband. But um, sometimes it gets to, you know, to the point where you have to rely on them. And um, it takes a very strong relationship and a very strong communication bond to make that happen. I can pass it back to you. Well, thank you, Cindy. Um, I definitely would have to agree with that as someone who's been on both sides myself. Um, communication is definitely important. Um, so my question for Nelson is, as a licensed caregiver, as someone who does not have any health problems, what is something that you do that you feel like other caregivers could benefit? What's something that helps your patients or, you know, whoever that you're helping that's chronically ill? What's something that you feel like is the most beneficial? One thing I, I feel that is could be most beneficial is kind of like Cindy, Cindy said, just uh, be there for them because I know in my experience, the person I make caregiver for um, sometimes just needs someone to talk to, just needs support. And so that's where I found that I feel it can, I feel it can benefit from because I know sometimes it can be hard being a caregiver and it can be stressful at times knowing that you're not able to help your person get over there you can't 
like somebody said you can't fix them even though you wish you could and just I feel just really just being there for them whenever they need whenever they need you even, even if you have to like just staying up late at night with them if they're not like, scared if they're having a bad pain night or just bring them their favorite food like Chinese food or whatever and so just really just being supportive as much as you can within your own means. Well, thank you, Nelson. That's a very good point. Um, like I said, I've been on both sides of the spectrum. I'm a former med tech, and I used to work in geriatrics, which is you know Alzheimer's and dementia. And um, one thing that I will say to caregivers that I didn't learn until I was um, – until I was in my later years of, of practicing and that sort of a thing and when I became ill myself, there are a lot of um, nonverbal communications and nonverbal things that um, as caregivers we need to pick up on. Um, you know, maybe there's a grimace or something or, you know, maybe somebody's shivering and there's a lot of nonverbal things that um, a lot of times chronically ill people, we don't want to complain. We don't, you know, we feel like we're a burden to everybody and we don't want to let somebody know if we're hungry or we're thirsty or we need something. So sometimes the best thing a caregiver can do is really take that extra initiative because I know with, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia, they can't always tell you, you know, that they're frustrated, that they're hot, that they're thirsty, that they need something to eat. You have to kind of watch those cues and try to pay attention to them. Are the, is their skin flushed? Are they shivering? You know, it takes that extra step to really pay attention. And especially, um, you know, if you're a caregiver for somebody that's, you know, close to you, you kind of have to, to just know them and, and know their baseline. And if they're a little bit off today, you know, what's going on? Do you have enough medicine? Have you eaten? Um, I know that I've been very blessed with people in my life that, that know me well enough to know something's going on. Um, my mother is a nurse practitioner. My, you know, my best friends have been in medicine, and I'm I'm very blessed to know that they have been there for me. So, as caregivers, um, first of all, I want to say thank you um, because we we can't do it without you. Chronically ill people, we uh, thank you for never making us feel like we're a burden, and um, keep doing what you're doing. So, um, Cindy, do you have any last comments? Um, uh, nothing other than I think that it's just important um, to, you, you have to really appreciate your caregiver. I think that um, they need a break uh, once in a while, just as much as we need to be taken care of, so do they. I make sure that, you know, my husband gets a break or he goes to the gym or he, um, you know, goes out for a couple hours because I think they need to recharge in order to to take care of, you know, of their spouse or their significant other. I think that it's important that, that they stay healthy and that they stay, you know, mentally, you know, capable of, you know, of taking care of somebody because it can get very stressful and emotional. Nelson, is there anything you would like to add? I think it's funny how Cindy mentioned the gym. That's what I was going to mention, because that is my outlet, how I deal with stress. Um, I'm a gym rat. I love going to the gym. Um, I would live there if I could, but I think they would frown upon that. But I actually just came back from the gym before doing this webinar, so I think it's really funny that you mentioned that, Cindy. But yeah, um, just words for other caregivers, find an outlet that you can channel your, your stress into the world is bothering you. Because um, I know it can, be, it can be hard at times, it can be stressful, and just, it's not good to let that stress bottle up and build up, because if you don't deal with it, it'll deal with you. And... <laughs> So um, it's just it's really important to find outlets to deal with your stress. So for me, like I said, I go to the gym. My boyfriend may like going to the gym. So I mean, if you like swimming or going hiking or whatever, just or drawing or just find it's really important to find 
an outlet also a play and something that helps me uh, teach my son to do so just really just find an outlet for the help you know, your stress and too. That's what I have to say. Well, thank you, Cindy and Nelson, for joining me today. And like I said, this has been Plugged In with the Unchargeables, and our topic today was both sides of the, the stethoscope. So thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.